within a distant stellar system. Astronomers discover Okay, we're alone. I'm going to do a game nobody's ever heard of. The algorithm will hate that. You guys know about Perilous Warp? Perilous Warp. Saying the name is fun. I said I was going to do a video on it, and I'm sandwiching it between Halloween and Christmas before I get to whatever the Christmas video is, and whatever else happens in December because there's no Christmas stuff to cover. What are you doing? Doing the Fallout 76 video, boss. So I got me a Mr. Handy buzzsaw blade that leeches health. It's so broken. You know, this bit would hit harder if it had something to do with Activision or Rockstar. Anyway, Perilous Warp comes to us from Christite Softworks. <coughs> Anyway, Perilous Warp comes to us from Christi Softworks and is less of a mid-90s shooter and more of a late 90s, early 2000s shooter. Don't pay attention to all the chasm stuff here, like the shotgun and the machine gun. It's not fast like early 90s games, it's slow. But like early 90s games, you're a hardened marine at a space base. A lone marine. The game explains why you're alone. The teleportation technology only lets Earth send one person. See, there were experiments with teleportation and they went wrong. Have we ever seen teleportation experiments go correctly? It's either horrifying and brings demons or aliens that want to kill everyone, or it's extra horrifying and produces a brundle fly. When Tesla starts making teleporters that accidentally fuse people with ugly cars, I won't be surprised. Actually, no, that'll probably be the point of the experiment. To create a kind of ride service where you never get to clock out, where the experiments vomit up your Wendy's order and then you realize they forgot the fries, so you shove the bag back into the receptacle and send it back or else it won't get its tip. Its life is pain, honestly. Don't forget to tip. Perilous Warp, which is still fun to say, is a very basic shooter. In fact, it's mostly inside of a sci-fi tech base. Oh, that's not a pun I meant. God damn it. Perilous Warp, which is still fun to say, is a simple shooter in that it's mostly inside of a sci-fi tech base. It's really odd and cool looking because this is all brushwork, unlike in, say, Unreal or Unity games where they make everything out of meshes. This has a very distinctive look, like something made in an enhanced Quake 3 engine with pretty effects on top of it. It looks like an HD pack for a game I've never heard of, except the whole game is like that, so it's a coherent art style. You have these hard Doom 3-like shadows, specular, and bump mapping, stuff that went out of style 15 years ago. This uses the Volatile engine, which Christi Softworks made themselves, basing a lot of it on what they call called the Quake Ideology, which I assume means everything is pretty brushwork, which is cool, I miss that. The game itself is... Uh, game's fine. It's not spectacular, but it's more than competently made. Everything works. The story is bad, though. It makes sense, but reading the logs listed on the Steam page is optional, as if that's a feature, and I can safely say that it is entirely optional. In fact, not reading the logs may make your experience in this game better, because they're as blunt as a sledgehammer. I'm gonna provide a dramatic reading of one of these logs in an attempt to demonstrate. Benefacit qui ex elurium erubius sibi exemplum sumit. Wisely does he act whom from the errors of others derives an example of his own advantage. Every log starts with some Latin, it's a thing. I, the chief security officer of the colony, one of the last colonists, I appeal to you. For a long time, we had got a hasteless life full of challenges, small victories, and great hope that we would fulfill with honor the mission of our home planet Earth. But one day, everything changed. The colony was attacked by unknown enemies. We are holding on, but we are definitely running out of strength. We uploaded some useful information to mobile storage devices, or data cubes. I am sure it is going to come in handy. I hate to be that guy, but those aren't cubes. Our mission is at stake. Christerite, the mineral we started to harvest. Say what you want about the name Christerite, it's better than Habardium. Habardium, the most valuable and treacherous thing in the universe. Could start a new era of interstellar movements for the humankind. Whether this is going to happen or not now entirely depends on you. Good luck, Marine. I think we should cut our losses and bug out. I know interstellar mining is cool and all, but we're mining the thing that allows us to travel to do the interstellar mining, so the whole thing is kind of a wash. This story takes place in the 2050s, so it assumes we're only 30 years off from having interstellar travel. It's even like a prediction of the future that was made in the late 90s. So, okay, the story is not really worth your time. The game is better. The first level doesn't inspire much confidence in me. It's hallways, almost entirely hallways. They're cool-looking hallways. You can tell the designers weren't half-assing them. I'm a little upset that Earth HQ didn't send you back with a gun, so the first enemies you meet, these annoying scorpion things, have to be meleeed to death. It's not terrible, except for every time you get hit, the screen shakes like this in a very Doom 3-like fashion. But here's your first gun, an assault rifle that's very round. I don't know what it is about these models exactly that makes me think of earlier games, 
They're so round, like the detail in them is more about aesthetics than trying to make it look realistic. The best way I can describe it is that look at this Half-Life box. A simple cube. Break it open, get stuff. Now look at this Perilous Warp box. Same function, about 30 times as many polygons. It only took a couple swings of the knife to take out this scorpion, but then six bullets. As far as I know, the location-based damage in this game is limited, but present. You'll see it more when we meet enemies that have more defined body parts, like... The other enemies can lose limbs too, I wasn't able to shoot the gun arm off no matter how hard I tried. This game is, I want to say it's very, very fine. It's above average, like it does everything correctly but not spectacularly. It has the feel of a tech demo for this engine, but it's good. Everything runs well, I didn't encounter any bugs or crashes. The AI is fine, it can dodge your attacks unless it's a scorpion or something, and then it... So, the game has AI, and it works. The game has secrets, lots of those, a ton I didn't find, and they work. Destructible pieces of environment, yeah, it's got that. Power-ups, yes. A shield power-up and a damage power-up, both of which I often don't get to effectively use because of where they're placed, and both are explained by a data cube. The power-ups have dry text explanations. They're alien artifacts. Yeah, it's all here, RTFM. Warning. Remote detonation device activated. Explosion in eight seconds. That's a lot of feedback for two points of armor lost. But it's a cool explosion, and with all the debris and physics and shit, I am satisfied by that explosion. Christus Softworks also created Jack, a brand new level editor for games with a Quake-style BSP architecture. Jack stands for Just Another Creation Kit. You know, it's another level editor, you might want to use it for your Quake maps, you know? No pressure, it's another level editor, you know? You know, it's just another level editor, my guy, it's got some features. Come on, you don't want that? Over here, I got a Perilous Warp, I think you'd enjoy a Perilous Warp, you know? Maybe a good pastrami sandwich with a sensible amount of mayonnaise, maybe this and these on all it's only got about 80k miles on it. It's not new, it's not fancy, it won't suck you dick, but it'll drive you somewhere reliably where you can get your dick sucked. You want weapon upgrades? We got them. Got this here double-barreled pump-action shotgun. Yeah, you don't have to choose between the two, you get both. Except you gotta upgrade it before you can use both barrels, because... The shotgun is fine. It's good up close. Nearly useless from a distance, but when it works, it works. Did you guys miss sewers? Here we go, we got one in the very first level. Oh god, that count is... Oh, it's starting to smell. I don't like having it around anymore, but the fans demanded it come back. Whenever the sewer count wasn't in a video, all the fans were asking, where's the sewer count? It's a cool water effect though, I really like this. Shooting ahead off with a shotgun. I'm not used to it, but I'll take it. There are portals scattered around the levels to take you to different areas, but the main portal here will exit the level. Because of the number of secrets and how well some of them are hidden, you'll want to double back and look around. To give you an idea of how some of those are, there's a secret teleporter in the exit room that's opened by this switch that you shoot, which is a fairly common way of finding these secrets. The level designer hides one of these switches in a hard-to-see location, you shoot it, there's a small bit at the beginning where you shoot a switch to open the main path through the level, but these switches show up more for secrets than anything. Okay, teleport to level 2 to re-establish uplink with the colony, you must locate the mothership Twinkling Star. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, okay. Well, I can shoot these fuckers' heads off. They seem to take a lot less damage when they're pouncing at you. And when they hit you... I was mad, but then the jibs. When the enemies don't die spectacularly, they die kind of boring, letting the understated ragdolls do the work. At this point in the game, you're doing a standard shotgun for close enemies and assault rifle for far enemies thing, while the main enemy soldiers get better weapons, like a grenade launcher... Nope. The enemies are usually pretty accurate, but not these grenade boys. You have a grenade launcher soon enough, which will get upgraded into a rocket launcher. When you pick it up, the game spawns its worst enemy, I guess, not counting the scorpions, who are more annoying than difficult. These plasma troops force me into cover. They do lots of damage very quickly and dodge attacks. They won't dodge out of splash damage range. 
They don't show up too often, which almost makes it worse because you're never really ready for them. It's kind of a breath of fresh air too, because the game itself is somewhat easy, at least for me on normal difficulty, since there are health pickups everywhere. The machine gun is also in this level in a not secret, but also not directly in your path area. I don't like it. It feels like it doesn't do a lot more damage than the assault rifle, but it overheats and has a wind-up, and I would use the assault rifle instead, but the game stopped giving me ammo for it. When they say they took inspiration from Chasm, they weren't joking. I'm gonna finish that game one day. The rocket launcher, on the other hand, the splash damage melts enemies almost as much as a direct hit. It's crazy. You get this disc thing, the Reaper, which I think is supposed to show off the dismemberments. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Okay, level 3. Really starting to heat up now. I think this game is best when it throws more enemies at you. Except fish. I don't know if these are alien fish, but fuck them anyway. This game doesn't let you shoot underwater that I know of, so you have to knife them. Or that. Oh, for fuck's sake. God damn it. Man, look at this generator room. This is very much something I'd expect out of a later Quake 3 engine game. It's so damn cool looking. The curvy but still very chunky environments are a lost art form. Twice in one level? You spoil! Someone, Perilous Warp. More of the Half-Life influence shows in this area here with these turrets. The easiest way to deal with them is a rocket. Sometimes there are conveniently placed explosive barrels around. This one section of the game is focused exclusively on maneuvering around and destroying these turrets. It is kind of Half-Life-esque in its set-piece design. Oh, and also... Attention. Cargo teleportation system activated. Warning. Warning. The next level... By this point, I'm breezing through this game until it takes an unexpected turn into serious Sam territory. My minigun is not up to the challenge. Stop! It just hit me as I entered level 4 what this game made me think of. It made me think of what Creed would have looked like if it wasn't shit and you could see things in it. This game also has a water section. That water sure is pretty and full of killer fish and bigger killerer fish. But I found a real good secret here with a railgun, which is quite useful when I finally get out of the water. Yeah, it's a lot like Quake 3's railgun. Feels good to finally jib one of these fucks. I've got to take an elevator down to- oh, hey, I get a jib and a decapitation with the shotgun, that's cool. I've got to take an elevator down to this rotten trap where I'm surrounded by alien grunts and eventually down to this other teleporter room. Oh, come on. Aw, oh, Civvy, you better talk about the other secret chasm shotgun in Perilous Warp, or else you're gonna get comments about it telling you how stupid you are for not finding it inside this secret, inside this secret, behind this random wall. Here it is. There's two switches in this teleporter room I have to hit. One up a ladder, and one up a broken ladder. There's ropes here, but I'm 99% sure this game doesn't have rope climbing. Oh, well, that's the first I'm hearing of. It sounds like some tech demo shit. As far as the story goes, I'm chasing the Chronosphere, a powerful artifact that can teleport me back to Earth. This teleporter will take me down to the mines and... Wait. Final battle. So yeah, level 6, and that's it. This is my second playthrough of this game, and with a fair amount of secret hunting, unsuccessful secret hunting a lot of the time, it lasted about two and a half hours. I don't think they should be charging $15 for that. 
I never found the railgun upgrade station, but the railgun scope magically appeared on my railgun, possibly because I found one in this secret right before the boss arena. Yeah, it's a shootable switch you have to really look for. The boss is a bigger alien who shoots plasma and rockets. The rocket splash damage fucks you over just as much as yours does. Fair enough, I guess. The colonists couldn't figure out how to damage this big guy. Maybe they could have tried shooting the glowing pipes up here and then shooting him about a dozen times with the railgun. Done and done. It's like a shareware episode. And then it's over. You get to the chronosphere and then back to Earth. Remember to seal the perilous warp behind you. Otherwise, the alien hordes will immediately invade Earth, running amok and wreaking havoc amongst the unsuspecting public. With an ending that says the end, question mark. I find this game fascinating. It takes a different approach to the whole retro FPS thing by making a game in the style of a retro FPS, but adding more detail and effects to the whole thing rather than making a pixelated mess like those fucking hacks over at New Blood. But then also they're charging 15 bucks for an above average tech demo of their cool little engine and you know, it's fine. All right, but next time I'm gonna do a video trying to find out why people love Chasm so much. No, I'm kidding, it's Rot 2013.